Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back to take a look at some more Mattel figures. Yes, we've got ourselves another round of pop-ups, and I know that may not be the most exciting thing in the world for some, and of course myself included, because I'm not the biggest fan of the pop-ups. I am pretty excited about this round, because we do have some cool species in this, including a Pteranodon, which looks far different than anything that we've had like this before, like any type of uh, Snap Squad, you know, Pteranodon or anything. Like, that looks very different. We also have the Indominus, and I always get excited for anything Indominus-related, as well as the Allosaurus, which I am a huge fan of, and I actually like the colors of that one. I would really like to see an Allosaurus figure released in the main line of Mattel, with that type of coloration. I think it would be really cool. And then we also have a Troceraptor Panthera over here as well, which again is fun to have more Troceraptors in this line. And there was actually one other wave of these that had come out previously, but unfortunately it never showed up anywhere around here that I know of. I think the only place I had seen it was maybe on Toyopolis, and I don't even know if it's available on there anymore. So looks like unfortunately one of these waves I'm going to miss because because I don't know how really to get a hold of it at this point. But regardless, this wave is pretty interesting, so let's pop them all out of the box and we'll head straight to a closer look. So we'll begin with the one that I'm personally most excited about, and that is the Pteranodon. You can see the Pteranodon actually looks pretty cool, even though he obviously does look a very bit strange when it comes to the appearance of a Pteranodon, especially when it comes to the wings. I feel like the wings do look like straight up legs and uh, then just kind of having wings attached to it. But at the same time, he just has such a unique look, and the fact that he's kind of doing a handstand makes him uh, pretty humorous to me. But you can see when it comes to the actual sculpt and detail up here in the face, it does look quite nice. Mattel usually does a great job when it comes to the fine detail of their figures. We absolutely have that here. You can see we do have a dark gray for the head and most of the body, honestly. Actually, the entire body, really, except for the underside. But for the beak, you can see we do have kind of like a reddish brown, and that transitions out to a yellowish tip for the end of the beak. And then you can see that we also have that kind of reddish brown here for the lower jaw as well. And then we have yellow eyes and a black pupil. As you look here on the inside of the mouth, you can see we've got a pretty decent looking coloration in here, but it's actually kind of like the same tone of color almost that we have for the beak itself. But uh, again, the teeth, which Pteranodon did not have teeth, but we do have teeth on this figure. They're nicely sculpted out overall. You can see they're all painted pretty nicely pretty consistently, no real sloppiness. The tongue is nicely textured as well. So overall, again, even though it's a highly inaccurate Pteranodon, uh, which again, you don't expect that, especially for a pop-up figure, it's kind of fun looking. But on top of that, you also have, again, a light tone here for the underside of the Pteranodon. You can see a light gray that runs down here along the underside. You almost would expect this to be the coloration running along the underside, but it actually is not. As you move through the course of the body, you can see that the, you know, hands here of the pterosaur are nicely sculpted with some scoots. And you can see the nails are also nicely sculpted, but they don't have any paintwork. But because the coloration is a dark gray... It almost kind of looks like it's kind of painted in a way, I guess. It almost has a little bit of a satin shine for the nails as well, which also there is a nice gloss coat for the inside of the mouth, something I did forget to mention. But the detailing here through the course of the wing, as far as the skin detail, does look pretty good. And again, the same can be said as you move through the course of the body of our Pteranodon, of our Pterosaur, that as well looks pretty decent. So even though it's clearly not the greatest Pteranodon that Mattel has made, it's kind of fun for what it is, I guess. We've also got the Allosaurus, and the Allosaurus, in my opinion, does look pretty cool. Again, these figures do always look fun just because they have that kind of Snap Squad look to them, but the gimmick that they have for them just isn't really that great. But you can see that the detailing of the Allosaurus does look really nice. We do have those classic Allosaurus crests. We've got primarily a variation of kind of like a dark green for the body color. Then you have a light green here on the top of the head, and you see that light green run down there onto the tail as well. And that's really about it outside of the light tone of the underbelly, which is also a different variation of a green, a very, very light green. I kind of have to hold this guy a little bit further away from the camera because for some reason uh, this camera does not like anything that's green so if I bring him close well it actually didn't seem to change too much it usually alters the way that the uh, 
color looks on the camera. I don't know, it just messes with it sometimes. But uh, you can see that the detailing and everything here of the head of the Allosaurus does look quite nice. We have the nostrils and stuff sculpted out. You can see the eyes kind of like a brownish tone. Then we have a black pupil. The inside of the mouth sports the same type of coloration we saw on the Pteranodon. Decently detailed on the inside of the mouth. You can see the tongue and everything in there. And of course we have the teeth all sculpted out and painted, which... They look kind of okay, I guess, but again, it's a decent Allosaurus. You know, they definitely did a great job when it comes to giving this that kind of, again, pop-up look while still having the features of the Allosaurus, sort of, most specifically the crests. And then, of course, those kind of ridges moving along the back, I think, are the areas that really kind of give it away that it's an Allosaurus. Again, no nail paint or anything like that. The arms are held into the body, and unfortunately, they do not articulate on the pop-ups, whereas they used to on the Snap Squads. But it's, uh, again, as far as pop-ups go, it's pretty fun. We've also got a Troceraptor Panthera. Now this figure is definitely the same as the previously released Atrociraptors we've had. So sculpt-wise, there's no difference. Paint-wise would be the only difference. You can see we have this light variation of a brown for the primary body. You have a darker brown that kind of runs through and under the eye. You have a nice yellow eye with a black kind of slit-like pupil. There is a speckling as you move through the course of the figure as well. And then you can see a light tone for the lower jaw as well as that light tone running along the underside. And that light tone, it's kind of like an off-white, is also the coloration for the legs of our Atrociraptor. So this Atrociraptor actually got a decent bit of paintwork, more than I think any of the other figures actually had, which is a plus for this one. The inside of the mouth, again, sports the same tone of color we saw in the other two. The teeth are painted again with kind of like an off-white bordering on a yellowish tone, also similar to what we saw in the others. And everything in the inside of the mouth sports a nice gloss coat, and that's really about it. There's not really much else going on when it comes to the uh, paintwork of the figure. But when it comes to the Atrociraptor version, that's pretty good. And the final one is the Indominus Rex. And you can see the Indominus Rex has a very angry look on his face. He definitely does not look happy. We have kind of like an orange eye and a black slit-like pupil. You can see we have a dark brown that kind of runs here through the face. And then we have a light gray for the body color after you leave that area. You do have a variation of a dark gray appearing very briefly here on the back of the Indominus as well. And uh, the inside of the mouth again sports the same tone of color we saw in the others. Also nicely glossed, same sort of coloration for the teeth. They're, you know, painted and sculpted pretty decently. And although the Indominus does have that kind of interlocking look to the teeth, this doesn't exactly have it, obviously, because the pop-ups are a little bit different from what we used to see in the Snap Squads, where you would actually still get those interlocking teeth in the Snap Squads. You don't really get that with the pop-ups. One thing I'm not a big fan of, though, is the random teeth that stick out here in the front of the lower jaw, because they just look completely out of place compared to all of the other teeth. So it looks really goofy. It kind of gives you almost that interlocking look to the teeth when you close the mouth. And I obviously think that's why they did that, but... Once the mouth's open, which is what it usually is, it does look pretty goofy. We do have, uh, no, not really. I'd say maybe there's a different tone of color as you often see on the undersides, but not on this one. So really, that's about it outside of the potential speckling. Not seeing that either. So not a whole lot when it comes to the coloration of the Indominus, but it does look pretty cool again for being an Indominus Rex. I'm always a fan, even if he's not the best one that we've seen. And now it is our time to try out the action features and see if they actually work, because that is the biggest problem, I think, with these that I've found so far, is the fact that the action features are so inconsistent and don't usually work very well. So we push the dinosaur down, so I guess it's kind of sleeping. As you can see, the eyes kind of close. It's not entirely closed. Almost makes the Indominus look like he's absolutely not going to trust anybody, so he's kind of almost sort of sleeping, but at the same time, like just trying to fake you out into thinking he's sleeping. And then, if I can recall how to do this right... There we go, we popped him right back out. So that one does work pretty decently. I'm very intrigued to see how this one is going to work. He actually has pretty good balance. Like if you look at him, it's not like anything's holding him outside of these hands right here, outside of the wings. And he does balance really well. So let's go ahead, 
First of all, we close the eyes. Same thing going on for him where he doesn't look like he's actually sleeping. The first couple seemed like they would go to sleep when you would push them down, then they'd pop back up and wake up, whereas these newer ones almost just have that suspicious look to them rather than the sleeping kind of a look. And I don't know how to do this one because it's so awkward. Yeah, kind of. He definitely pops out pretty nicely, but because he's sort of awkwardly positioned, it's kind of strange to do it. This one does not work at all. I don't know what's going on. So when you do close the eyes or attempt to, you can see the lower eyelid here has popped up. I don't see the upper one at all. I can kind of make out the lower one over here a little bit up there, but not much. He's not working. Oh boy, I think he's stuck this way. Yeah, I can't get him back out at all. There we go. Oh, so uh, this one doesn't work at all. He does not pop open. He doesn't jump. We'll try it once more. I'm almost terrified to do it because he seemed like he was going to be stuck that way. All right. So I did get him to work that time, but you really had to push him down. So Panthera is a little bit of a problem. As far as the Allosaurus goes, same thing with that kind of evil sort of a look. Although you can see the separation of the lower eyelid there, you can actually see some of the orangish tone of the eye under it. But that's just a very, very minor nitpick. He does pop open really nicely. So three out of the four work okay. We're not going to do sizes, comparisons, any of that stuff. We've reviewed quite a few waves of these pop-ups so far, so I really don't think that we need to do sizes or anything as far as that goes. So even though I'm not a massive fan of the pop-ups, I have kind of been enjoying collecting them, and uh, I'm kind of regretting now not grabbing that other wave just so that I can keep my collection complete because that means I am technically missing four figures from my collection of pop-ups. And at this point, the pop-ups have been out for so long that I almost feel like they've got to switch it up soon. Like we'd have to go back to something different at some point soon and leave the pop-ups behind. I would love to see them go back to the snap squads, but I can't see that actually happening, even though there are so many species they could include in those figures. But again, as far as what they are, they're okay. And I am really happy to see some of these here in the line, especially the Indominus, because I love the Indominus Rex. So anytime I can get a new version of the Indominus, I'm happy, even if it is a pop-up version. And even if he is a little bit ugly, he's still kind of fun. The Allosaurus as well, I really like because I am just generally a big fan of Allosaurus. And I actually really quite like the colors of this one. As I said earlier, I think it would look great on a mainline figure something that maybe Mattel could do at some point but the sculpt looks decent as far as the fine detail goes and you can very obviously see looking at the figure it is in fact an Allosaurus so that's always a plus because sometimes the designs of these figures can look pretty off but the Allosaurus is fun the Pteranodon though I would say is my favorite just because it is so ridiculous and so unique as he's doing kind of like a handstand and obviously it's more so supposed to kind of give it the look of flying, I guess, but it's just so goofy looking, I can't help but love it. It also has some pretty fun coloration and really nice fine detail. Definitely my favorite of the bunch. And then Atrociraptor Panthera is pretty cool as well, because of course I love the Jurassic World Dominion Atrociraptors, and it is nice now to have this one to include in the collection to get further into completing my Atrociraptor squad, which I don't know that I have all of them quite yet. But it is a pretty fun figure. Nothing new sculpt-wise, but a decent paint job. Definitely has the most paint out of all of these here. So overall, again, they're not the greatest thing in the world, that is for sure, but they're okay, I guess. If you are interested in grabbing some of these for yourself, my good friend Plush Boy Q actually found these for me at his local, I think, his Meyer store? I believe is where he found them. So if you do have a Meyer store near you, I would suggest checking it out and see if they have them. Unfortunately, I don't have any Meyer stores in my state at all or even the surrounding states. So if I need something from those stores, I've got to reach out to somebody else. And again, Plush Boy Q, as always, hooking me up with the good stuff. So if you are interested, check your local Meyer store. If not, hopefully they'll show up at Walmart or Target sometime soon. And also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.